We are in Yorkshire today. Um, not for this Mini Marcos, although it's a very nice Mark I car. But we're actually for another one, which is mine. So let's have a look inside <coughs> this nice little workshop here. There we go. This is the chassis of a Cox GTM that's being restored. And uh, more cars over there. Now this one is my car and that's Peter standing next to it. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Yeah, uh, Peter. Um, 70s Resto um, and we have been given the project of restoring uh, Jerome's Mark 1, 1966 Mark 1 Mini Marcos, uh, which is a privilege and a pleasure. Uh, Thank what you. I'd like, what I'd like to do is just introduce the person who will be doing most of the work, that's Paul. Are you a little minute, Paul? That's Paul. Hello. Hello there. So, Paul will be doing most of the work. Um, fortunately, we've got quite a lot of knowledge on the Mark I Mini Marcos. Um, a few things which I would like to do, take this opportunity to do, and that is, is just go through a brief number of components uh, on this vehicle, which demonstrates that it is actually the genuine car. So what I'll do is I'll do you what I call a whistle-stop uh, tour of the vehicle, starting at the front. Yep. Um, some classic stuff here. We have some original holes where the wing mirrors were uh, in 66 and then some uh, holes which were put in afterwards which these are all correct and corrected to position one of the things that I really do like and that is um, looking for detail, Jerome's been really quite good on detail he believed that this was the correct uh, unit, like unit that went on the side having said that it isn't he's located the correct one which you can clearly see fits beautifully. The only thing is... We need to drill the holes, right? We need to drill the holes, just clean them out. Redrill them. Redrill them, but the holes are there, and yep. they're all absolutely perfect. Yeah. And then obviously the lens needs changing. Yeah. Also, Jerome has found some beautiful Civi uh, spot lamps, which fit under here absolutely perfectly. And those are, is as it was in 66. So pointing see, outwards slightly, pointing right? Pointing upwards, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It needed to be pointed upwards did that. Yeah. But, and it looks good. It genuinely looks good. It looks correct and it looks good as that. Now... So, how about the overall state of the, of the body, Peter? Can you say something about that? Overall, it's not too bad for a Mark I. Because all the paint is off at the moment. Which it took a, a lot of time, especially for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It took quite a bit. There is a multitude of layers, yep. and it did take time to, to get through the layers. One of the things that we did have to do, which I felt was important, and that was to work through the layers slowly. The reason being is we could identify the colours which are at the correct layer level donated its history and we had to keep a record of that yeah um, we did finally get down to the blue the original blue and the yellow pinstriping to which we've now got the correct color for that which is which we're quite excited about mm -hmm. and that followed on if you just allow me a moment i should get a dog <coughs> for you this is an example of which has been left to demonstrate this Looking at the door, we can see where we are, but leaving on, we have the different colours. Yeah, let me zoom in a bit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think many people already saw it, because I took many pictures, of course, mm -hmm. but they probably haven't seen the, 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 the five being so clear, clearly visible there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I shall point that out to you. That's the top of the five. Yeah. That's the stem running down. Yep. And then here's the curve of the five. And it, then it comes up. It's remarkably good visible, isn't it? It is indeed. And yeah. what we have been able to do is to trace these off so then they can be replicated correctly. Yeah. And again, just to recap, you can see the colours as you work down in history. Obviously the early colours running all the way through to paints which went on top so the final yeah. colour was this dark red. colour yeah. then you had the lighter red, the green, the white, there's a black, there's a blue, yeah. there's a primer so you can see 
the, the full um, areas yeah. of colour. Which we've got a little important. bit of, uh, of the original blue left, haven't we? We have indeed. Do you want to... What will happen, and what is going to happen, is on the door... That's a very good example of the, the original blue. blue. That will be maintained, cleaned and covered over, yep. so that once the latch is placed on, it will be hidden underneath, and that is to identify the fact that this is the correct car and that is the correct colour. Yep. Because prior to this being discovered, you really didn't know what the correct colour was. Mm -hmm. Coming to the back, then we have a little issue which needs to be dealt with with the rear wheel arch. Mm -hmm. Originally they were fitted on with fittings and it had a lip. That's now disappeared and will be reconstructed. What we are, what we will need to be doing, I'll just locate it correctly for you. What we will there be doing is rebuilding, recreating these wheel arches. So then we can refix them into their original holes. As you can see the original holes are here. Pop rivets, right? Pop rivets, correct. Um, these will be filled. Yeah. The reason being is, is these came these were uh, actually made at a later date, so therefore incorrect. Yes. Okay. One detailing which I found exciting. On the vents, there was one which was cut open, and there it is. Yeah. Not a particularly neat job. No. Nope. There it is, nice and clean. Well. Slash in the actual vent. Yeah. And yeah. that's the only opening in the vents that exists on this shelf. So it demonstrates it is the it is the correct car. Big hole for the huge fuel tank and huge filler. Still a mystery. Still a mystery and hopefully we'll find it one day. <laughs> um, and moving back, obviously there's some damage to the back. This will be all made good. Refiberglassed in mm -hmm. and back to how it was. So that's not too bad. Now, here's an exciting bit. This hole is correct. There is a round hole which we located and traced. Yep. So we know exactly where it is and the size. And on there went the number and here is the one of the original lights which fitted on so you have a red for the back and obviously a clear to shine hopefully on the on the number as it were now this hole that was fitted in at a letter what day was that drilled in was it 19 early 70s early 70s and that yeah. was just for an aerial so that will be removed yeah we've got the same issue on this side with the wheel arch and again, this one being slightly better, right? It is in better condition and probably the one we'd start working on first. Mm -hmm. You can see the later fixations which are incorrect and these are the correct early ones. Which yep. are absolutely superb and those will be re-drilled, relocated and the wheel arch put back to how it was originally. Yep. Uh, and then fitted on correctly, which is just really fitted on. So, uh, moving down and have a quick look inside. These floors will be... Uh, it's had a double skin. Now we suspect that it may have had balsa wood in there because it's light and balsa wood is strong when mm -hmm. laminated. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately balsa wood soaks in water. So we suspect that these were cut out because it had moisture in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put that back, make it, uh, get it back to original and re-skin it. And that's both on the front and the back in, in, in all the wells, which is, which is all correct as it were. Now there's some other good detailing on this vehicle. And that is, we've got the original holes for the um, uh, the bonnet catch, yeah. uh, which is the old rubber type, yeah. and then also where the bonnet locks, the original bonnet locks go, which is quite good. Yeah. These are later holes which will be blanked off, they'll yeah. be taken out, yeah. uh, which is good. Now, this is a famous hole because something fitted in there, almost like a, an L-shaped plastic tube type thing. Um, so that is something that uh, we're looking at. But there's the location. Yeah. We even have a bonnet strap, and this was a particularly long bonnet strap because when we go down on the bonnet, you can see the other holes. There you go. Quite, uh, quite good. And then obviously the where the windscreen wiper uh, went, the single the single wiper. Yeah. Okay. Now moving on to some exciting uh, parts of the vehicle. Another exciting discovery, oh, is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> It We've is, had so many in the, pa in the past few months. It, it, it has. It's been, it's been a collection of exciting parts. I was standing inside the engine bay, uh, just checking and cleaning various bits and pieces out, mm -hmm. and what I discovered was some holes on the inside. Now, these holes are very important. Now, let me see if you can that's, zoom in. That's there and there. Four of them there. Yep. And another four 
over there. Now, the thinking is that these four form part of a set of eight either side, mm -hmm. which were there, which were placed in after a series of holes were put in the middle. Yeah. So those came first, and when you look at the images and the story of it, the history of it, it, it done is that those were put in first, and then these were added at a later date, and they still exist and have been fiberglassed over. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> obviously that's all going to go back to how it was. And what, what surprised me, Peter, is that the holes were quite a lot bigger than I was expecting, because when you look at the photographs, they seem pretty small to me, mm. but these are massive holes, aren't they? They are large. Yeah. The thing is. The problem and the issue with photography of the day is that uh, technology has obviously moved on and it's a representation. You get a good idea as to what things look like, mm -hmm. but having said that, photography was photography in its day, so therefore it, it, is, it is difficult and we have to be very careful. Yeah. But having said that, when you look at these side by side with the images... It all makes sense, It all it? makes sense. Totally, yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah. Obviously, there's quite a lot of components missing from here, which will be uh, rectified. Yeah. And also, uh, there are some other parts in the engine bay, uh, modifications and remodified, which all fits in with the life history of uh, this vehicle. Now, I think that's it for the moment. There's clearly lots of other things. Lots of works. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, we'll leave it at that. And um, hopefully, the next time you see it, then it will be. It'll be further forward and back to how it was in 66. Thank well, you. Thank you very much, Peter. No, thank you. Up till the next time then.